Scientists from the Wellcome Center for Integrative Neuroimaging at the University of Oxford investigated brain changes in over 780 individuals from the UK Biobank. They performed MRI scans on COVID patients and healthy controls for comparison. They found that among those who had been infected with COVID, there was a greater reduction in gray matter thickness, greater tissue damage in regions of the brain that are related to olfactory or the smell complex, and an overall shrinkage in the size of the brain. The scientists also noted that participants who had suffered from COVID also showed cognitive decline between two separate scans. All of these effects on the brain were also seen in people who primarily suffered from mild COVID or did not have the need to get hospitalized. The authors of the paper conclude that the results could be indicators of degenerative spread of COVID via the olfactory or smell pathways caused by either the loss of sensory input from loss of smell or by inflammation of the spinal cord and the brain. They write that at the moment, it is unclear whether these changes and these effects on the brain will persist in the long term or could be partially reversed. The brain, however, is a highly plastic organ and can be quick to recover. In this video, we'll discuss findings from this paper, how these scientists conducted this study and what all these findings imply for long COVID and its treatment. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. The study is one of the earliest conclusive studies into how long COVID impacts the body and especially the brain and is in fact the first study to compare changes in the brain over time with brain scans from before a patient contracted COVID. Persisting symptoms of long COVID weeks and months after infection primarily include symptoms like fatigue, shortness of breath, brain fog, loss of concentration, disruption of sleep, increased anxiety and reduced cognitive function. To understand what happens in the brain over time that leads to all of these neurological symptoms that are so widely experienced and observed, the team performed MRI scans on brains. For the study, the scientists recruited 785 participants from the UK Biobank which is a very large-scale medical database holding genetic and health information of over 500,000 UK citizens for the last 15 years. This database also held MRI brain scans of all the recruits in the study from before the onset of the pandemic and has also been releasing data from COVID re-imaging study on a rolling basis. Of the participants in the study, 401 individuals had contracted various stages of COVID, while 384 were healthy individuals who were controls and were matched for age, sex, ethnicity and time elapsed between two MRI scans. All participants in the study were aged from 51 to 81. For COVID positive patients, the time elapsed between the first scan post diagnosis of COVID and the second one to study the effects of long COVID was 141 days. Of the patients who had tested positive for COVID, only 15 had been hospitalized, of which two had received critical care. These patients were all older men with many more severe comorbidities. The later scans between patients and controls showed differences in areas of the brain that are functionally connected to the primary olfactory cortex, a portion of the cerebral cortex that is involved in the sense of smell. They also found reduction in the thickness of gray matter in various regions as compared to the control's brains. Gray matter consists of neurons, neuronal cell bodies, the bodies of neurons, as well as synapses, which enable one neuron to pass an electrical signal to another. The cells in gray matter are involved in controlling the movement of muscles, in sensory input, pain and motion input, relaxation of muscles for metabolic functions, changes to the body's organs during physiological responses, and many other processes that are essential for our survival. Gray matter is one of the major components of the central nervous system and can undergo variations due to lifestyle changes, substance use, and pregnancy. 
the most significant reduction in gray matter occurred in these regions, the ones that are primarily connected to olfactory processing. While the disease could have had a direct effect on this part of the brain without the virus entering the central nervous system, it is also likely that the cells here died due to lack of use when COVID patients suffered from persistent anosmia or loss of smell. Gray matter reduction also occurred in the parahippocampal gyrus, the part of the brain that is associated with memory and recall. The patient's brains also exhibited evidence of tissue damage in regions associated with the olfactory complex. The largest changes were noted in the olfactory system dealing with smells and the limbic systems which are involved in core behavioral and emotional responses required for our daily survival. The authors also noted that the brain showed an overall reduction in volume and size. To confirm that the effects on the brain were from COVID specifically and not from pneumonia or influenza, the team also performed additional comparisons with groups of participants who had contracted these but not COVID. The authors found that those who had suffered from COVID had difficulty performing cognitive tasks like they used to. They were given tasks like measuring memory, matching pairs and more, which are often used to differentiate between healthy aging and dementia by measuring people's attention and efficiency. Over the course of these tests, the scientists saw that participants took a significantly longer time to complete numeric and alphanumeric trail making tests which involved linking numbers and letters alternately in a trail if they had been infected with COVID. With cognition tests, the team also found that people in their 50s and 60s performed similarly, but the differences shot up very significantly after that. On average, participants who had been infected with COVID showed greater cognitive decline between their two scans. This cognitive decline from the scans is associated with atrophy or degradation from lack of use of parts of the cerebellum which is involved in cognition. Why such changes were caused in the brain in the first place is as yet undetermined. The scientists theorized that it could either be from inflammation as an immune response or from sensory deprivation from not using the olfactory complex leading the cells here to die. It is unclear at the moment if these effects on the brain are temporary or permanent. However, the authors and other experts caution that the implication of the changes are unclear and that our brains, which are highly plastic and flexible, could actually recover quickly or even be in the process of recovery right now for these patients. These findings also do not necessarily imply that COVID will affect cognition or memory in the long term. It is also unclear if these findings will affect a person's quality of life long term. These findings come along with various other studies that have been exploring long COVID. There are an increasing number of studies every day into this phenomenon as more and more people talk about long COVID and experience it. Now through the course of this year and more in the future, we are sure to see many, many more studies identifying the effects and mechanisms of long COVID and very soon, hopefully, also its treatment.